In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work a basic circular Tenerife lace medallion using the Gina B. Silkworks Tenerife lace loom. I'm going to use loom number one, and I'm going to use the example pattern that comes with the Tenerife lace key, which is in all of the uh, packaging with each loom, regardless of whether it's a medallion or a shape. The idea be behind the notation is so that you can read the patterns without necessarily needing to speak English um, and that it can be abbreviated so the patterns can read in the same way as crochet patterns. So we'll start with the patterns first. Always all medallions are worked from the center and then out. So the first thing that you need to know is how the center is worked. So in text, that's DD, so double darning. Okay, here double darning, which is illustrated here over two, under two, over two, under two, and so on. Usually sensors are worked for two rows, so any weaving you would then make it in opposition for the second row. Unless instructions state that you need to work more than that, just use a default of two rows because that will actually even out all of your, your threads that radiate out from the center. Okay? Then these dots are knots. So here we have a K, a dot, so the dot is on the drawing, the K is on the text instructions. So not four ends, E is an end, an end is one single strand of thread. That will become clear as we look further at um, doing the actual lace. So we do, we knot four ends for one row, then we move out one centimeter, thereabouts, and knot four ends for one row. So you're knotting in a line. Then we go straight to, we move out, and we work the edge. So the edge is this funny little pie symbol, this little sort of top and a crown symbol, SC edge. So we need to check the edges which is on the other side. An SC edge is a scalloped edge and the scalloped edge appears as so. So basically you are knotting two ends but you're knotting the two ends that are either side of what will be your holding stitch here, so the ends that we loop. That again will become clear. But as you can see here are other types of edge treatments. So when you come to it you have the description, you have the abbreviation for any shorthand instructions, and the explanation of what that is, and you can refer to the drawings to see how that looks. Likewise, with any filling stitches, should your uh, pattern be more complex, all of your filling stitches are illustrated. They also have an abbreviation, so here, rounding back stitch and here rounding back stitch. So if any of you have ever worked uh, dorset buttons, rounding back stitch is the filling stitch that you use in a dorset button. So as you can see, each of these are very simplified drawings to show you what it is that you need to do to read the patterns. So as I say, work from the center out, also read your patterns from the center out. So let's get started. We're using loom number one, as I said, and now we're going to put the holding stitches in. Holding stitches, you need a thread that is fairly smooth. Don't use any wool, uh, that will interfere with your lace. Long, but don't use any threads that are sort of really precious or expensive because you're just going to cut these away. Thread a long length onto a tapestry needle 
that will fit through the holes. Now this pattern says that we need to work circle two. On all of the medallion looms you'll see that there are four different sizes of circles and so we work from the center out so one, two, three, and four. Okay, so circle two is this little the second one out so hopefully that makes sense and we're going to come up leave a fairly long tail anywhere it doesn't matter where you come up in the holes and then you're going to go back down at the next circle in a straight stitch and we're going to do that all of the way around and as you can see that that means that what we're actually doing just getting a few tangles while I first get started because I'm trying to keep this a little bit still I'm aware that the lights are reflecting a little bit you can see that there's a hole that we're leaving in the middle here that that's because circle three has more holes than circle two so these stitches need to be fairly tight because they're going to hold your lace in place while you're working okay so I'm sure you can see what I'm doing now I'm going to pop this on pause for a moment and just finish lacing all of the holding stitches so I've worked holding stitches all of the way, the way around so that it's at number two and out to number three just pop the last one in and then I'm going to turn the loom around and knot the end of the threads together so that that stays nice and taut so that this will hold the lace threads in place while I'm working the lace you don't have to worry about any particular type of knot you just need to know that that is going to hold So there is our loom set up and ready to start. Now, as you work, the side that is face down against the loom is the right side of your lace, which is going to be really helpful to note, keep a note of because that means that you know that you can place knots and add threads as you need to without too much worry. I'm going to use a cotton perle number eight thread, which is a little larger than the thread that comes in the starter kit, so that you can better see it on screen. I've threaded a curved needle, and you can see that the profile of it has just got this little um, kink at the bottom, and this really helps to work the lace, and that will become clear as I'm, I'm using it. If you don't have one, you can use a straight needle but it is more difficult the curved needle does come with the starter kit and we also sell them singly on the website which the link will be below I've threaded up singly and it's a very long length of thread at least two arms lengths you can add more thread as you work but if you can manage to use a longer length to start off with it's it does make things a little bit easier when you're first getting started just take your time so I've come up through the central hole of the loom and I'm leaving a tail at the back now as a beginner you may wish to just tape that tail to the back of the loom I tend to hold it work up to the first stitch in a straight line from the central hole so that holding stitch you want to take your needle underneath it in a clockwise direction so you want to go up and then to the right and then you want to come down and you want to go to the holding stitch directly below and enter from the right to the left so again you're working in a clockwise 
direction and then you'll go up to the next one along at the top and then down to the next one along at the bottom and you'll continue in this way and this is called stretching the web it doesn't matter what shape lace you're actually creating the principle of stretching the web is still the same work underneath the holding stitches don't split them if you can possibly help it um, because if you split them it can be difficult to remove the stitch um, from your lace you might get little fluffs of uh, thread otherwise but that's the other reason why you take care not to use a uh, fluffy thread for your holding stitches because it will catch so just keep going round and around try to keep the tension even that's why your holding stitches need to be fairly tight that will ensure you see when when your stitches are tight it'll ensure that all of these loops are in a nice row if one of your stitches is too loose then you might find that the loop ends up down here um, and slightly out So we've come full circle and we go back to the center. Now at this point, you can run your needle up to make sure that everything is more or less in the center. And then we're going to work the center as the pattern. Now, remember that all centers need to start with two rows of double darning. So our thread is naturally going down to the, towards the bottom. So we want to go under two, over two, under two, over two, and work around. And this is where you can get everything lined up as closely as possible to the center. And you can use that central hole to help to guide your needle to make sure that you're lining everything up. You can also use your needle. You see how this is, these threads have crossed a little bit just to even those out as well. So we've come back down. We'll go over this one and we should, if we were going around in the same, we would go under that again, but we're not. The second row has to be in opposition, which will, is what will lock these threads in place. So we'll go over, over, and under the next, so that each row here now will go back to the over unders. But you see, it's in opposition to the row that we just to the first row that we did. And again, use your needle to get everything in line. and as close to the center as you possibly can. Because if the center of your medallion is central, it makes putting, getting the rest of the pattern even, a little bit easier. So, now we're back to the beginning. Now we need to start working the pattern. Just line up any of my threads. 
just check everything's nice and parallel and looks fairly central. So we'll go back to the pattern sheet and of course it says not four ends for one row and that's what this is. So I'm going to show you now how to do the Tenerife knot. This is the thing that you need to really practice. So four ends, one, two, three, four, okay? Hold your working thread off to the side a little bit. Bring your needle under the threads that you want to knot, so in this case four. Bring the working thread up and around the needle. And then pull the needle through. And what I like to do is hold this initial end as tight as I can where I want the knot to be until I can't and then pull up and knot. And So you see we've grouped two. When you start out the easiest way is to use two hands so place the loom flat down if you can because then you don't have to worry about actually holding on to the loom. So I'll sew that down again for you. So, thread, needle under what we're going to knot, and it's over the working thread here, can you see? But it's under those that we want to knot. And then bring the working thread up, around the needle. So it's a little bit like a twisted blanket stitch. It just creates that nice little loop and knots it, okay? And then work around. I'm going to put this on pause and I'm going to work a full round here. Okay? Okay, I've worked a full round and now I'm back to the beginning. Always end a round or a row by working a knot underneath the first knot of the row. So basically one place will have two knots and that just finishes off the line because of course What's happening is, is as the knot moves to the next, you're getting a line that goes around the work. And you want to make sure that that is carried through in any design. So, the pattern now says, move out one centimeter, knot four ends for one row. And that is depicted by this row here. So the move out one centimeter is basically just an idea to give you a, um, an idea of where you want to go for balance, okay? But because it's saying not one row, uh, not four ends for one row, and those ends line up, then we know it's the same four ends. They haven't been split. The instructions would say if they were to be split. Now, with any of the patterns, it, they have to, by necessity, be more simplified at the center. We're only showing one instead of four. So you do have to refer to the instruction, but you can get an overall idea of what that's going to be. So we come down, and here's our working thread. So we're going to put the needle over the working thread, underneath the four that we're going to knot, bring it up and around, and then take the thread through and knot. And you may be able to just see, I've decided to place these right where the holes are of the previous, um, of the medallion one. So that will help me to keep everything in line as I work around. I can refer to that as a guideline to where I'm going to place them. 
and you see this is what I mean about the line that is created between the knots. Okay, so again, just knotting in a nice little row. So above the working thread, under the ones we want to knot, up, around the needle. There we are. And again, I'll put it on pause and work around. Just as I come to the last um, knots in this row, I wanted to show you how I tend to hold the loom. Is that I will hold the loom supporting the back of it and having my thumb pull the thread. Because instead of twisting, as you get used to it, what you'll do is you'll just come under and this loop will be created automatically so you don't have to actually pull the um, thread around the needle and just hold it and I hold it with my thumb until the last moment. So you see coming like that and that frees up to work a little bit quicker. Okay, so there's our second row and now we're told to SC edge so that's to work our scalloped edge. Whenever it says to work an edge you need to come out to where your holding stitches are. That's where your edge is worked. It's, it won't be worked in here unless specifically safety. So here our scalloped edge. So those dots there are representing your holding stitches or your holes in the loom. Okay, so we can come down and we see that we need to take one end from one side of one holding stitch and one end from one side of the one next to it. Okay, and again we'll work the basic knot just get this little kink out of my thread. Okay. And then we'll work the next two for the scalloped edge. And so you can see now that I'm not holding I've not got the um, loom flat, how I'm holding it and how I turn it. Now my needles just come unthreaded so let me just quickly thread that back up. Sorry about that glare. I'm trying to avoid it, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And so you can see that by creating what will be the scalloped edge, we're getting a straight and a triangle and a straight and a triangle as we work along. Now, again, I'm just going to put it on pause and work all of the way around. And so, here I am, nearly full circle again. I'm going to place another knot below the first knot. Just pick this up to do this. As you work, the threads will get tighter and tighter. So there's only so many designs that you can do where you're stretching the different threads about, um, depending on how many threads you have and will be how much you can stretch it. So you do need to be aware of that. There will be a point at which you can't stretch them any further. So I placed another knot underneath and that should be fine to hold it. But if you're worried at all, go right ahead and work another knot 
if you need to. You can also use um, a little bit of um, fabric glue, just pop it on the end of your knot if that makes you know you feel a little bit better. And then trim that. Now at this point, drop my scissors. At this point, if you want to starch your piece of lace, you can do that whilst it's still on the loom. If you were to use um, our Kansashi starch adhesive, I'd water it down uh, one portion of the Kansashi starch adhesive to one water is usually fine unless you want it really really stiff and then you can use you know the the adhesive neat and you can brush it onto your lace so that it permeates into the threads don't whatever you do let it touch the very edge and you're holding stitches or else it's going to make removing your lace from the loom really really difficult because you'll effectively be gluing the holding stitches to the lace Right, so now I will show you how to get the lace off of the loom. Turn your loom to the back using some nice sharp scissors. Cut your holding stitches. Now the reason that we do this from the back of the loom is that means you're not going to catch your lace in any way. So you can just cut all of this thread and you're not risking that piece of lace that you've worked so hard on. Turn the loom back over and you can gently lift the piece of lace from the loom. Then you can just take the holding stitches away from the edge of the loom. Again, do this quite gently just in case you have caught any, you've uh, split the threads in any place. Now that is the back of our piece of lace. So you want to turn to the front and you'll see that you've still got your tail that you left at the beginning. Thread your tail onto your tapestry needle. Take it through so that it goes through to the back and then you can simply knot that thread and then trim. And there then is your piece of lace, your little medallion. Pop it on there so you can see it better. And then what you can do is make up lots of them and join them together.